There we go. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, another episode of the Culture Shock. I came back this time. I actually came back. It's not dead yet. It probably will be in the next coming months, but it, it's still here. It's still here. I, I still got the licensing right. It's, it's good. All right. <laughs> um, today, see? Fucking perfect. You, you know? Yeah. I, see, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I barely, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hey, buddy, you got to be careful with them copyrights. You never know. <laughs> exactly. You know, you never know what I mean. Them lilies are up my ass. <laughs> so, um, my guest today is someone I've known for, I can't even put a number on it. It's been that long that I can't Let's even just, put a number on it. We'll just say, we'll just say centuries. It's been centuries. It's uh, been, yeah. Each other. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's been millennia. All right. Millennia, so, there you go. Uh, my guest today is someone I've known for a very, very long time. He is the lead guitarist and lead singer for the endorsements, right? Am I getting your title yeah, right? No, we half and half, but and, yeah, basically. Yeah, but, um, it, am I getting the majority of it right? I am the founder of the band that they okay, call the Endorphins. Um, okay, founder. All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> well, I've already done spilled beans in the pot, so introduce yourself. Well, I am Manny Mora. I am from a band from Hemet, California, in the middle of nowhere, and we are called Absolutely the Endorphins. In the Literally in the middle of nowhere. You don't even understand. Ever seen Courage the Cowardly Dog? basically but with cows yeah <laughs> but, yeah i would say that's where we live <laughs> um we play a fusion rock it's a mix between i try to give myself credit and trying to say that i make poppy old school rock with a mix of gypsy music and a mix of exotic music and that's why we call it Jip Rock Music. It's a new genre that we're trying to bring out to the world. Even though we're in the middle of nowhere, we're still trying to strive to be something big, you know? I mean, think about it. If you're not a dog killing shit, then you're never going to get big. <laughs> like, yeah. Basically. Think about basically, it. It's, it's uh, like an animal kingdom, man. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. For sure. At this point, it is a doggy dog world out there. But... Still got to be humble. Got to remember yeah, that. I'm not, no, yeah, obviously, you can't be like, oh, once you make money, you can't be like, oh, I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Like, you know what I mean? That's. I uh, I definitely tell Gabriel and Justin that, though. I'm like, hey, bro, trust me. The moment that we make a fucking hit, even if it's if it's just a one-hit wonder, out skis. <laughs> we're gone. We're, we're, we're going in Nebraska. <laughs> God, skis. Retired. Retired. <laughs> we'll go to an even more residential out of nowhere place. You'll go to fucking Iowa. <laughs> You'll play not fast this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> For real. All right. So, uh, you said, how long, if we could give the backstory? Because this has been, I feel a little rusty. It's been a while since I've done this. It's been, it's been about a month. So, I'm trying to get my chops back. Um, how long? You said it as a joke that it was millennia, but you can't really put a number on how long we've known each other, right? It was, oh, honestly, it, it's, was it's up really bl it's really blurry, you know, because I came to Hemet about um, only ten years. It's probably been about almost ten years. So I know that for the first year I was around here, I wasn't talking to anybody. And mm. then I started to like slowly be social towards people. So I want to say like, let's say like seven. Let's say yeah. lucky number seven. All right. I, I was, good thing is not unlucky 13. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. All right. So uh, that segues into a story later on, but uh, <laughs> that I got to tell. But 
All right. So it's been roughly about seven years, right? And you know about my music stuff and how I haven't done anything with it yet. How like I I wrote a bunch of stuff like lyrically, but I haven't done anything with it. I just like it's just like a mechanism I have where if I'm bored and I think of something really catchy, I'm just like, oh cool. And then I just write it down so I don't forget it. And I try to work it into something somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've definitely uh yeah, you've definitely even called me. You've even like had moments of just like uh, messaging me and just being like, hey, bro, I kind of have this idea, but I don't know how it actually works out. And then you kind of just like ask me, does it does it sound shitty or does it? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I know there's been many nights where uh, like I'm right. I wrote something down and I'm like, oh, I got to I got to like ask somebody about this. Who who am I, who do I know that's my music friend? Manny. He'll he'll fucking he'll do it, right? So I'm like, oh dude, uh I wrote this. Does it sound like shit? <laughs> <laughs> and bro, like honestly, like the thing that's really cool is that um I've been waiting for you to do something because like I could see it. It's like it's coming together. I could see the puzzle. I, I could see it too. <laughs> Like I could see the um I could see me going up in a jump shoot or something fucking weird and like jumping around stage for twenty minutes for fucking four people. I could I could totally see that. <laughs> Why not? That's so raw. And like that's something that that energy, that commitment is something that you don't see from a lot of people anymore, man. Like I could see myself doing a whole uh slipknot thing. Well, not I entirely ripping them off, but I could see yeah. myself doing something with face paint or something, like cutting my hair really fucking crazy it, with a mohawk or something. Oh my god, bro! I, I can totally yeah, see. Yeah, I can definitely see it. I can see myself like you know, hitting a keg with a flaming bat or something like that. Well, that's more. That could be more in wrestling than I having hitting people with like. <laughs> paint. But. I mean, I do, have a death, Throw yourself I, through. I do have a deathmatch wrestler friend, so I think I got connections. <laughs> hey, bro, why not every single show just throw yourself through a flaming table? That's just like your thing. And hey, bro, it will be the most unique thing. You play a killer set and then right after you just set a table <laughs> on fire. Just like I've, <laughs> I've, I've fulfilled my Vic Foley dreams and have someone throw me. It's like he's getting oh thrown off the cell, but I'm getting thrown off stage. Oh my goodness. Oh, please. Please the have the fire bills. hydrants. <laughs> the medical bills. All right. Oh so, my goodness. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of songs that I have not done anything with because I, 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 I honestly have no idea. I haven't done anything with them. They're just sitting there in my fucking uh, in my notepad, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like these are cool. I if I do something with them, cool. If I don't, cool. I wrote them. Like <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. That, that that's awesome. All right, so transitioning. Uh, you know, smooth transitions. I don't know what I'm doing. Smooth okay. transition. So, yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, I would say we are both gigantic wrestling fans. Just about. It's not to a point where it's unhealthy, but it's like kind of, it's borderline obsessive. It's what it is. <laughs> it's, oh, wow. um, that was a crazy black flag. You can hear me so, right? Yeah, but like, oh, oh, there you go. You come back. You're coming back. Move a little bit. Oh. Okay, good. All right. You, you, yeah, you, you were like stuck here for a little bit. But then now you're here. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, right, cool. I would say yes. our wrestling uh, deal is kind of borderline obsessive at, at a certain point. It's it's there. It's for it, sure there. It's more it's, of it's my comfort food. It's a <laughs> it's, healthy it's appreciation. Exactly. Exactly. And think about I this. Hey, it's not. It's not borderline upset. We're not upset because we're not running fan pages that are like, oh, I am Randy Orton. 
Like, you know, you, you, you know how you see those fucking that's pages true. on Instagram? That's true. Where they're like, oh, I am the Undertaker. And oh my God, he looks so good in this gear. Oh. Like, we're not that person. <laughs> we don't care enough. Bro, yeah, like, there's oh, so like, oh, fucking there are so weird ass people. Yeah, I've seen, um, I've actually seen a couple of Instagram pages that were so weird. Like, uh, fucking, I seen a, a Instagram uh, page of Keith Lee and Mia Yim, and it was like a fake page with a whole bunch of pictures of them acting like and, it was like a couple's account, yo. Bro, like so creepy. Where the fuck do they get these pictures? I, I don't <laughs> like, know. I don't bro, know. <laughs> imagine the type of digging you must have to do to find a, a picture of Keith Lee coming out of his bathroom. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying, man. <laughs> like he's dropping a five million dollar deuce. Give him a second. <laughs> I'm done, yo. Uh, but yes, yes, definitely a, a healthy obsession, I may say. I, I've been watching wrestling since I was about since as long as I could remember. So probably like around like three or four. My earliest memories, actually, and it's actually really cool. My. Uh, Two earliest memories with wrestling was Mick Foley falling off of the Hell in a Cell. I will never oh, forget it. that. That's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, surprisingly the same thing too. Oh my goodness! And then the other thing was Mick Foley actually winning the uh, WWE Championship and, uh, or the WWF Championship. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was amazing. That was stupid on that part. My, they basically took viewers away from their show. <laughs> Being like, oh, you're always going to win their world title. Everybody was like, oh, I don't see what's going to win the title. They lose about 100,000 viewers. <laughs> that is their own goddamn fault for that. And you it's, know, like, that's it's so better. weird. And yeah. I, I, yeah, you know, and I'm telling you this right now. I hate the fact that people try to compare right now AEW to WCW because AEW is just a whole different enchilada. Like that thing, like <laughs> the whole different know. thing after. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like it's not even the same ballpark, man. Like, I don't know, like what they're doing right now for for AEW and just in wrestling in general, I'm. it reminds me of the Attitude Era. It's so weird, bro. Seeing CM Punk return and that crowd just ridiculously crowd going fucking, crazy. Oh, my God. They lost their mind. And, and, him, it was, and him, it was him jumping into the crowd. Oh, my goodness, man. It was he does uh, that every amazing. <laughs> like, and, like, I don't know, like, that's what I love about wrestling. I love moments like that where, like, you know, we're so connected to, like, just the journey that these wrestlers have gone and, like, the fucking, the fucking blood and sweat that they put in for us to be entertained. And to see something like that, CM Punk returning to the one thing that made him great, it was just one of a kind. You'll never see that again. There's never going to be a return that big problem. Hey, Not unless, really? do you think, who, who who do you think, if someone would return, who's the, I mean, to me, the only one that I'm waiting on is, is my dad, The Rock. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, The Rock would be cool. But actually, what the thing is, is the thing about that is all the wrestlers I want to see return are old as shit now, and they're retired. <laughs> so I... Like, there's no likelihood of Stone Cold going on a full fucking, you know, like a, oh, no. <laughs> like a full schedule. Because the man retired when I was two months old. So, like, I don't think yeah, man. that's going to happen. But if The Rocks came back to wrestling, people would lose their fucking minds. There's only, and there's only one match. There's only one match that There's would make it worth it. There's only one match to do. One match, and it would be Rock versus Roman. That's it. That's exactly. all you need. 
and the winner would be the fucking head of the table. And then he'd be like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> shut up, like, yeah. yeah. You're the head of the kids table, bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you talk, you talk too much. Bachmania. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, um, speaking of wrestling, uh, I went to two wrestling shows unexpectedly. I lost. I, I that was the weekend that I lost my mind. It was in a good way. I lost my mind in a good way, but it was one of those weekends where it didn't feel real. You know what I mean? It felt like a fever dream. Yeah, you know? bro. So I went to SmackDown, and my my impression, I was so clueless that I thought I was going to get breakfast burritos, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, and like once I saw that we, we went to Phoenix, I was like, what the fuck are we going to Arizona for? <laughs> he was, and he was like, we're going to Philly to get some cheesesteaks. I was like, we best be going to East Philadelphia. Because you know the, the <laughs> South Philadelphia, because like you know ECW Arena and all that, and yeah. he was he was like, yeah, we're gonna be driving for two days. I was like, all right, <laughs> and then we got to SmackDown, and I was like, holy shit, and we saw Keith Lee in a dark match. Oh, amazing! That Who did he fight? Crazy. He fought uh, some person I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. And my brother knew. He was like, oh. He, he was like, you know, if Seth isn't cheering for him, then I don't know who the fuck he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm known as the guy in the family that watches wrestling all the fucking time. And yeah, me same. I watch it as much as people watch football. <laughs> or like fucking Basically, or something. It's uh it's so funny. Like my family basically treats it like, you know, it's like it is, you know, when a pay-per-view does come on, it is Sunday night football. Like we do, yeah. like, you know, I'm gonna go get pizza probably, and I'm probably gonna go get some snacks to fucking you just watch like, my hey, whole fucking four don't, hour pay-per-view. Don't bother, don't bother me for the next four hours, okay? It's it's coming up and I need my time. <laughs> I'll usually be like, all right, from like from nine o'clock or from like seven o'clock when I wake up to whenever. Uh, or until like four o'clock that's where you got me tell me whatever you want you could you know i could do whatever you want but then after that i'm out <laughs> unless it's like a five hour wrestlemania that starts at like 6 30 in the morning <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're like, oh, don't even get me started don't get me started on the ridiculous amounts of pay-per-views that there are in like a year now compared to how it used to be like I just need one pay per view a month, please. Not fucking. I don't need like hundred. <laughs> yeah, I don't need six in a fucking uh, month and a hundred in a year. Like it's because it's, it's just a think lot. about it. Within the all of the wrestling companies that there are, so we have GCW, we have TNA, which kind of doesn't matter anymore because it's not 2017 and the broken hardy thing is over but still you know you have tna yeah <laughs> you have aew you have wwe you have ring of honor you have pro wrestling gorilla you have uh, wxw new japan pro wrestling and uh icw that's fucking nine promotions right there. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's a lot of content. <laughs> that is, bro. We're like we're pretty spoiled now days of how much wrestling you could actually be watching from anywhere now. It's it's really nice. Like back in the day, but back when I was a kid, 
how I watched pay per views was I waited to the raw after <laughs> and hoped that they showed some footage from the pay per view the night before. Because we didn't have Peacock when I was growing up. We had, uh, back when I was a kid, we had something called WWE 24 7. And it was a paid cable service. From what I hear, I, I never, we were poor when I was a kid. So <laughs> we never had the chance to, you know, pay for a cable service that had wrestling on it. We're lucky we got the channels that did have wrestling on it. But, but um, the 24-7 thing was a, a paid cable service that would show um, selected pay-per-views like for a month and they'd like circulate them along with like episode old episodes of raw and shit like that it was an early early precursor hey i I remember that that was like on like direct tv and stuff like that and it (laughs) it was from what i hear it was very shitty yeah it was kind of like the repeat it was it was weird it was like how would i explain it was like the morning news for wrestling so like you would just get like little blocks of information yeah like it i wow that's a blast from the past i totally forgot that was right thing. yeah that was a thing right <laughs> that's crazy yo oh man yeah to fucking even go throwback more bro i remember when i was a kid and i used to go rent the vhs's and fucking in uh hollywood video that was the place yeah. I used to go to a lot. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, that just brought back so many memories. When I was a kid, so there was a Jeff Hardy DVD called "My Life, My Rules," right? And it came out I in two thousand. <laughs> yeah, it came out in like the summer of two thousand. And uh, Hollywood Video was still a thing back then. So me and my mom, we went to Hollywood Video. And we saw, we like we saw that it was going to be released, and then we saw it, and I grabbed it, and then we we rented it, and we watched it four times within two days. So it was a it was a three disc set that had the documentary on the first disc, and then the other two discs were like match compilations. That. Oh my goodness, yo, that that brings back so much memories, man. Like, just like in general, just like to know that nowadays we're to the point where we could just go on our phones and look up anything and look up any type of wrestling from any. Like, oh, just, I want to see Stone Cold versus Triple H from SummerSlam 1997. We could do, we could fucking do that. Just no problem. Right now, back yeah. in the day, we'd have to like you know, <laughs> back in the day, we'd have to go through tape bins and see if we could find a tape that had it on there. Bro, you're telling me the fact that I could go back right now to the SmackDown right after Jeff Hardy won the WWE Championship for the first time that I remember watching live. Like, it's so cool to me that I could actually go back to any of the old shows. And that's something that we can never have back in the day. There was no fucking VHS tape of the best of Raw yet or shit like that. That didn't come out until, like, later. (laughs) Yeah, you know, that's when we had DVDs and Blu-rays already. Like, hell. (laughs) Like, dude, I have a WWE DVD collection in a box in a box over there. Like, I have a good like size collection. I even have a tape. I'll be right back. It's right here. I, I got it sitting right here. It was an old WWF tape. And how you know it's an old WWF tape? No, it's a compilation. Oh, of the best of WrestleMania. Oh, that's amazing, yo. And like that's how you know it though, because it's got the fucking WWF logo on it. Look, let me shine some light on it. Oh, that's so fucking badass, yo. Hey. You can see the old hey. WWF logo. So you know, it's a fucking it's a it's a whole thing. That's a gem, man. 
That's a gem for sure. Because I remember me and my grandpa, we would uh, go to thrift stores every like weekend or some shit. And we'd go looking for WWE tape. Because it was like 2008, 2009. No, it was, it was maybe 2011. Or it was some time. And we'd go to thrift stores every Saturday. And we'd look for anything wrestling related. And I'd be like, I'm buying it, right? And that was the only tape we could find. And I still really? had it. And it still That's worked. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I actually should find it somewhere. I have, um, going back to that Hollywood video thing, uh, I actually rented a movie, a pay-per-view from Hollywood video a couple, like a week or two before, before they actually just like, yeah, and I don't even know why they rented it if they knew they were already closing down. But you know, if, come on, um, can you buy this from us? <laughs> yeah, can I just buy? Either way, I got it for only like fucking like I don't even remember how much the rent fee was back then. Like probably like two bucks, three bucks. But um, it's an old pay per view. I don't know if you remember this, but The Rock had a pay per view named after him. Yeah, Rock, Rock Bottom. Bottom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I have that tape somewhere around there, and it like it trips me out because I'm just like, wow, this is like a gem that you'll never get anywhere else. Like the wrestling site, like it's so weird to me to think that if you go back in time and if you remember, like old uh, Hollywood videos would only have like a little tiny wrestling section. It would always be like in yeah, the corner somewhere. Be, too. You'd have to, you'd have to go on a search for it. That's like yeah. horror movies in the eighties. You'd have to go on a search for them. Uh, I think maybe that was the fun about it, honestly, bro. It was just the time. It was the era where we just did whatever we wanted in that sense, you know. And I remember, dude. Oh my god, uh, it was the pay per view was Armageddon two thousand six. Uh, no, it was two thousand seven. It was because. Uh, it was the pay per view when um, Mr. Kennedy fought Undertaker in a casket match. Oh, uh, okay. And the Miz fought um, the Miz fought the Boogeyman. And back when I was a kid, I was terrified of the Boogeyman. I was oh lord, I was terrified of this man. Like, dude, I could not be in the same room when his entrance music played. It was, <laughs> it was one of those. Uh, I was so fucking scared of him, but now I probably got on Instagram and he just posts videos of him working out in boogeyman makeup, and it's fucking crazy. I don't know, dude, is, is this is the boogeyman. <laughs> like, that man's I'm just so bro, scared of this no, guy showing yeah. up. I am still terrified to this day of Mark Calloway still. I don't give two fucks because I grew up in the generation of this man sacrificing people on live yeah, raw. You, so. you grew up during the ministry of darkness days. That is when I wish I grew up. Oh my like, God. Oh my God. It I was ridiculous. in my household. Bro, you don't even understand how much it affected me as a kid watching <laughs> Stephanie McMahon get kidnapped. Like, I was so confused as a kid, and I was like, yeah. is he gonna Where get her? Like, what? <laughs> Bro, the, like, they it's on the fucking Undertaker logo. <laughs> Goodness, man. And then the, when Kane came, when fucking Kane finally came, oh my goodness, that was just the best. It was scary. That was terrifying for me, honestly. <laughs> Dude, just the fact that he, the Undertaker, would have people drink blood and he'd fucking sing his hymns and he'd go like this and he'd fucking. He fucking hung Gangrel after they hung a, he No, he hung fucking Boss Man after they hung a cell match. That could never happen today. Bro, they cut that shit from fucking the Peacock or whatever because that's just like not. <laughs> That was, that was not family friendly. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so I grew up on that scary ass motherfucker. I'm not down with that. <laughs> and uh, bro, like since the time I I grew up, it was like the early 2000s of wrestling. It was it was back when women's wrestling wasn't women's wrestling, like how it is today. 
Back then, it was, oh, they're fucking, they're going to fight in a mud pool. Like, you know? <laughs> it was, uh, the let's, fact that they let's got be truthful. It there. wasn't women wrestling. It was, yeah, no, you know, like, no, yeah, trust me. Yeah. We we were definitely in a fluctuation era for women. And it's very yeah, sad that yeah, yeah, yeah. the... And, you know, it's very sad that the late 90s kind of shows you. Like, <laughs> the, like, the only thing that we got out of all that shit was Trish Stratus. And it took her a long time to realize, hey, maybe I should be more of an athlete than, like, you know, just... Oh, my know, kiss my every few big ass boobs. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> all the like, 90s games uh, was Jerry Lawler being horny. Like, <laughs> Like, dude, oh that God. was our childhood, and it was super uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, no puppy. Doubt. He's like, dude, shut up. You're 50. That's a 25-year-old girl right there. Shut up. You're 50. You fucking creep. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And now, like, all this stuff, like, I don't know if you've been watching, like, Dark Side of the Ring and stuff like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're, they're going to get oh, into them. Don't worry about that. We're going to get into it. <laughs> so, um, I went to SmackDown, and uh, I saw Edge. I, was, I knew that... I didn't know that Edge was going to open the show, but I knew Edge was on SmackDown. So, I was like, dude, I hope Edge comes out. It was right before the show started. And I was like, dude, I hope Edge comes out, right? And then I hear the fucking... The, you think you know me from his theme song. And I lose my mind. I, I'm like, dude, you know. And then uh, the fireworks are so fucking loud that I ducked down like I was getting shot. It, it, <laughs> it was, That's yeah. amazing, yo. And you know how Roman Reigns does the whole thing where he raises his arm and then the second group of pyro goes off? Yeah. We forgot about that second group of Pyro, and that scared the shit out of all of us. And oh my we were god, like, you guys were pretty, oh you guys were on the balcony level, weren't you? Yeah, we were like, uh, we weren't, the wrestlers weren't facing us, but we were like pretty high up. Like, you could see us on camera if you uh, looked for us. That's fucking amazing, yo. Oh, I'm so jealous. I when I seen all those videos, I was just like, this motherfucker. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and then when you went, <laughs> and then I was like, oh man. And then when I seen the SummerSlam videos, I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Dude, um, so that Becky, when that Becky Lynch thing happened. Um, my brother called it five, like legitimately right before it happened. He was like, "Watch Becky Lynch come oh, out," man. and like her music hit, and I was like, "I lost my mind," and I was like, "He fucking caught it." <laughs> and then we saw Goldberg, we saw Edge, we saw the Brood Edge too. The brood edge. That's what I was jealous about. I was like, you you seen it. You've seen the one thing I'm never gonna see. <laughs> we, we saw bro. We like the night before once I heard um when we were in the the Phoenix Arena and we heard the um the brood theme song, because you know it's very it's instantly recognizable if you've been watching wrestling. Like you you'll get it right. It's just like the beginning of no more words like you know it's like the undertaker with his life going out you you get it and uh my brothers told me they were like oh um when we heard that brood music that instantly brought us back and gave us memories we were like yeah exactly and then we saw the the uh, the brood bath which was when he you know put put a bunch of blood on him and ruined his fucking he did it on that SmackDown, right? Yeah, on the SmackDown before SummerSlam. Oh, amazing. amazing. And then we, we saw Goldberg, which is cool. And then uh, 
I'm just happy I got to see Edge two nights in a row. And I got to see Cena wrestling two nights in a row. Uh, oh, man. That's and one of a kind. Yeah. Like, they made them follow me a year and a half, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm happy he is, but it's just like a why'd you choose me type thing, you know? Like, yeah. Now that I think about it, I have three re- three wrestlers that follow me. I have um, John Cena. I have Bam Sullivan, which is that deathmatch wrestler. And then I have, uh, well, he doesn't count as a wrestler. He's more of a manager. You know, uh, Zeb Coulter? Oh, really? Yeah, Dirty Death Santo. Yeah. That's sick. That's, yo, that's fucking sick. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, that's awesome. And uh, I thought, oh, shit, you know. But that fucking, that SummerSlam experience was awesome. And did you know that on October 5th, there's going to be an interactive um, movie with The New Day and The Undertaker? I'm coming to Netflix. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm excited about it, actually. <laughs> Dude, me and my brother are going to watch that movie so many fucking times. Mainly because we're going to go through everything. Like, we're going to we're gonna do everything. one for this path, one for the other path, and one for the path we missed. So we can see all outcomes. Yes, sir. That's what I'm excited about. That shit's going to be crazy, dude. Fucking, um, yeah, in general, man, I'm like really excited about some of the new content that's coming out for wrestling. You know, like it's we're in an era where it's really cool to be a wrestling fan again. And like, because back when we were growing up, and uh, like into like the early 2010s, it was not cool to be for some reason. After the 90s, it stopped being cool being a wrestling fan. Once they hit like 2000, after The Rock left and Stone Cold retired, it wasn't cool to be a wrestling fan anymore. I don't understand why. I don't get how you can, everybody can be a wrestling fan in the 90s, and then 2004 hits, everybody's like, oh, you're a wrestling fan? And they just fucking, you know. I I don't get how there's just that shift. In time. The shift happened because of it, it's it's the change of time, but at the same time, you got to remember the demographic at, at the moment. You know, back in the 90s, the WWF was for, def- like, adult. adults and like definitely way more like of the teenage. Like if you really watch that, era, it's a whole bunch of college guys. Yeah. It's like people they from like universities. In the 90s. I mean, come on. The fact that Valdez is playing with anything. Um, but I kind of like, I don't know. I feel like wrestling to me personally, I feel like wrestling stopped after Eddie died. After yeah, Eddie after died, Eddie died, died it, like, okay. because after it, Eddie died, yeah. then, you know, Ben Watt happened and then it was just a dark place to be a wrestling fan. Yeah. So like that, that's to me the beginning of it, because I remember specifically, cause I remember like I'm, I'm old enough to see the shift. So I seen like the rock left. Then people were like, oh no, what are we going to do? Then Stone Cold left. Then it was like, oh shit, what are we really going to do? And then like, I don't know. It's weird. There was like this period of like, it was like around 2004 to 2005 where it felt like empty. It almost just felt like yeah. they didn't even know what the hell to do. And then it, 2006 just happened. For ideas. And then next thing you know, they figure out that Eddie Guerrero is like one of the best wrestlers ever. And uh, they've had this guy on their roster for so long. But when they give him his push, he fucking dies. And then, yeah, like I said, then it started to get a little sour. Then the Benoit thing happened. And then that shit made it super sour for everybody. And they just right. like, oh, that, the wrestling thing, you know, that. That oh, turned it to be, oh, you'd be a black sheep to be a wrestling fan. Yeah. It's, oh, and it's um, 
speaking yeah, of uh, wrestling and all that, I have something from the SummerSlam pay per view, which is kind of cool. Check this shit out. I didn't have to buy merch because they gave it to me. Oh, what the hell? That's sick. Yeah, they, they gave me a towel. <laughs> Hey yo, fucking! Did they just like give it, uh, give it to you on your way in or on your way out? When um, when we were entering, entering, entering the arena, they 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 just had like bags full of them and they were just handing them out. And I was yeah, like, oh like cool. I said, like I said, I'm really jealous now that you went. Th- I've only gone to three wrestling of uh, live events, and I've been to. Two NXTs live events in Riverside, and uh, the only other thing that I went to, I was actually really, really blessed that I got to do this. I was at No Way Out 2008 in Las Vegas, Nevada. So oh, when, um, when the Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather and uh, Big Show thing happened. Yeah, yeah, I actually was there when I see Big Show returned. And bro, I was so hyped when I saw Big Show return because like, like when I got um, it's really weird because I barely had gone back into wrestling after mm-hmm. the Eddie Guerrero Benoit thing happened. There was like a six month period that I like I fell off it because I was like, like yeah, I need to take a, a break. Lot. I need to take a break. This was a lot for me. Then when I got back into it. And it was just so cool for me to go to this pay-per-view, see fucking Big Show, and then Mayweather fucking hitting him. And then seeing Shane McMahon, that was the first time you saw Shane McMahon ever on TV again in a long-ass time. And then um, Cause he left the uh, Elimination the Chamber matches. Yeah. That's when, bro, I just, like, I, I just wish that these specialty matches, like Hell in a Cell, and like, you remember back when Hell in a Cell matches and Elimination Chamber matches only happened when someone needed to settle a grudge? Yeah, instead of it being an annual pay Instead of it being a like, fucking annual event? Yeah. I feel like that's taken a lot away can, from, can, yeah, from wrestling. For, uh, can we talk about how... Um, Money in the bank should have just stayed at fucking WrestleMania instead of having it. Bro, think think about it. In the year 2010, we had two money in the bank matches. We had the one at WrestleMania, and then we had the fucking pay per view. So So we had had three money in the bank contract holders at once. So stupid. (laughs) It's like, bro, what the fuck are you thinking? You had a perfect deal here. But you decided, no, we need to make a pay per view. Yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah. 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 like, like, and, like that's something yeah. that pisses me off so fucking much. I'm just like, yo, don't fix something that ain't broke, and that was definitely not broken. But it is like, I would have to say, the best elimination chamber match of all time has to be the first one, either the first one as. Survivor Series 2002. Okay. Or I would have to say 2006 is a good one, where uh, Edge cashed in his money in the bank. Oh, yeah. New well, Year's wait, Revolution. no. Didn't he do that? It was New Year's Revolution that yeah, he it was uh, New- cashed yeah. that in. That was after the, after the Elimination Chamber match. Oh, yeah, I was. You are absolutely right. Because Kurt Angle was part of it and Bobby Lashley and all them. John Afford won, won that one, right? Yeah, he he won that one and he was all bloody. And then Edge was like, I'm cashing it. And then he's like, oh, he's cashing in his briefcase. And then they fucking went to the ring and then he speared him and he was like, oh, I would. That was the beginning of the Rated R Superstar era, basically. But Yeah. Fucking shit, bro. I'm going to be biased, honestly. I don't know. That 2008 one is like, so, people don't talk about it enough. That shit was too fire. It, it, was, like, it was a good pay-per-view, I can admit. 
Jeff Hardy was that close. I was this close to seeing Jeff Hardy win the WWE Championship. You have to wait for Armageddon for that to happen. Bro, you know what's bullshit about that too? About that particular thing is that I'm a big Jeff Hardy fan. That's like my favorite wrestler. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, fucking when he started to get into the, into the championship run, I was buying every single one of these pay-per-views. And this is before the network. So this is me. This is when pay-per-views fucking, were 60 bucks a pop. Yes. Thank you. So fucking it got I mean, to a point. I don't I'll understand never struggle. I, I watched Survivor Series, and then I seen him lose in that, and I was like, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm not even going to watch Armageddon. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Then I watched Raw, and then it fucking happened, and I was so pissed off. I went to buy the fucking DVD at Walmart immediately when it came out. And then you watched you watch SmackDown, the next, SmackDown the next week, and you were like, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, bro, you don't even know. I almost cried because I was like, I have been waiting so fucking long for this, and you're shitting me the one time I decided, fuck it, I'm not going to do it. He fucking wins it. What kind of stupid shit? And the most randomest pay-per-view of all time. You guys gave it to him at fucking Armageddon? You're shitting me. Like, come on, bro. Like, think about it. If you think about one of the best views that he's ever had, is the WrestleMania 25 feud with um with his brother? Yes, yes. And they also had that I quit match at the bash when he tied him up in the fucking table. That was that was just perfect. And um, I'm really sad because at this point, Jeff, they're not doing anything with Jeff. They're just waiting for him to wash it out, and they're gonna just give him away, which is really sad because, like I said. When Jeff goes to AEW to end his career, because he's going to go there to end his career. There's no chance now. He's wrestled in every single wrestling company. There is no way he's not going to do the last one that he hasn't done. And um, I'm just ready. Like, I just wish I would have been able to see, like, one more Jeff Hardy run of some kind. An Intercontinental Championship run of it. Some shit. Like, Something to make me feel fulfilled as a Jeff Hardy fan, but... He was the United like States champion for a little while. He was, he was, but, like, I felt like hey. it was lackluster, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, it, it was kind of half-assed. Because, yeah. think about it, he didn't have his old thing back, so it didn't feel like Jeff Hardy. That's true. And honestly, that's another thing, too. He didn't have his theme until the fans came back. And by the time the fans came back, they weren't doing anything with him. They had him with Kerry and Cross out of anything, doing a fucking like, single match. That was the entire reason that he buried Kerry and Cross, because everybody was so hyped over the theme song. <laughs> you guys hyped up this man on NXT for so long, and you guys just like, just like that, were like, nah, Jeff Hardy's theme song is so fire, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, fucking, you can't even see it in the video when you watch um, Jeff Hardy coming back and he's doing the whole singing thing and like the whole when the beginning of it starts when you hear the beginning like notes of the song you can see Karrion Cross almost break character because he's excited for the song to be back like he smiles and he looks away because he's trying not to fucking break character the break character oh my goodness man uh well like I say, God bless Jeff Hardy. That's all I got to say about that one. <laughs> now, when I watch Jeff Hardy's matches, um, and he does like a crazy spot, uh, like me and my brother, we talk to each other. We're like, yep, you know he's got to be hurting right now. <laughs> Bro, like when no, he did that watching... spot uh, from WrestleMania 33, when he jumped through the two, like when he put through the two ladders, and he's all holding his back when he's getting up after they win. He's like, yep, he's hurting. No, the one that worried me was that one that he had with Elias, where he did the swanton yeah, out of the like ring. His head to the fucking hit the I back was of so head. scared. <laughs> I was like, Jeff, the, the you don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> You're 40 years old. You have two kids. Come, fucking calm down. Calm down, bro. 
It's not 2008 anymore. I'm sorry. Fuck. You're not. You're not in your mid 30s. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like, keep it together. It's like the same thing when I thought when Shane McMahon jumped off of the helicopter. I'm like, you're letting your kids watch you die. Why? You're like, bro, you're 50. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Gonna, Come on, Shane. For the next month. Can we please stop calling him Shane O'Mac? He's he's 50 already. <laughs> that, that's like that's like calling um. Uh, fuck. What would be a good analogy here? Um, just like, uh, fucking. No, Stone Cold will forever be Stone, stone Cold. But, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But you know what I'm trying to say here. It's like, he's yeah, a 50 year old man, sure. I, and I he's it. still trying to relive his 30. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, oh, perfect example. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts, or not Jake the Snake oh, Roberts. Uh, yeah. That's a good, yeah. Jake. So, like, Scott um, Hall. <laughs> or Scott Hall, you know, like, come on, you guys. He looks like you he's a bully rock down. nowadays. Shit, even um, Ric Flair, that's a nice example. Ric Flair, like, yeah. Like, come on, bud, you know how old you are. You don't need to be doing that. You're 70, <laughs> you don't need to be showing your dick on a plane. <laughs> like, you know Are we I mean? going to segue to the helicopter? Yes, the helicopter? that is a perfect segue. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm getting my groove back. Come on, man. That is a perfect segue, Love isn't it. it? Love it. So, we are in the segment of um, Dark Side of the Ring. Some shit happens. <laughs> so, normally, these Dark Side of the Ring, they... um. They like they tell the truth about what happened, like the darker side, hence the dark side of the ring. They they tell the truth about how uh, like certain things happened, like with the fucking like they did an episode on uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and how his how he was like fucking abused as a child, and his dad was working the gimmick all the way from when he was fucking ten years old, and how he thought he was gonna, his dad was gonna get killed by these other wrestlers every week. The the type of stress you put on a child like that, that fucks them up so much. Yeah, no doubt. I think, uh, honestly, like that, the thing that killed me about that one is I had already watched the other Jake the Snake Roberts. The Snake Snake Roberts. Yeah, so like connecting both of them, like it was like the missing piece, and it was like it was really sad. I was like, oh man, to know that his sister was like kidnapped at a young age, and like, and how his dad was a fucking pedophile. (laughs) Yeah, just like damn, bro. Honestly, the the um, to me, one of the best episodes, uh, besides the one that we're gonna talk about in a second, is um. The Ben Wall one, honestly, I loved it because it had was, it was like a, two- a really good geek guy, yeah. It was like it was crazy because it was like part one was about Eddie Guerrero. It was literally just about what caused Chris Ben Wall to go insane. And to know that Eddie Guerrero was just brushing his teeth in the hotel room and he just dropped dead. That He's broke my heart. Him. And I was like, hey. just dead. And then the like, I can't even imagine like the co- complexity of like what those men were thinking and what Ben Wall was thinking, especially once he got fucking to the point where he got to, like, and bro, just think about what um, fucking Chavo was thinking, holding him in his arms and shit, being like, "Don't do this to me, bro. Don't put this on me." Like, fuck, I this can't even think just about that. Foaming- and imagine, like, and how he described it, he's just foaming up to the mouth and his eyes are rolled back. I'm like, oh, man, you know, that is not an image I needed to see. And then the know that, of course, Chris Benoit, like, cradled him once he knew he was dead, and then fucking to he's know that... The, the, bro, to find out how Chris Benoit actually killed his wife and to find out that he basically did a backbreaker on her, like, I was like, oh my goodness. The, <laughs> like the fact that he went to bed 
with the bodies of both his child, his child and his wife in the house. He was like, yeah, this is okay. And then he, he fucking went to bed. I'm going like, to I'm gonna go wrestle tomorrow. Like, you know, shit. And then he oh, fucking but- killed himself. And then he killed himself. So, yeah, like, out of all those ones, yeah, Dark Side of the Ring is really, it's basically, like, I um, I told it's one of my friends. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, it's like, hey, kids, you guys remember wrestling? Guess what? All those people are shitty people. Here you go. All those people are shitheads. Here's the new perspective on it. <laughs> and then, so, to, to talk about last week's episode and to talk about the famous plane ride from hell that we have all seen little videos on youtube about and that we've seen it's little clips explained millions and millions and millions of times and every single time it's a different fucking story so to finally get a kind of a like and we don't even know this is just another added on story but it felt like that one made the most sense out of all yeah. the ones that i've read because like, you got it you basically got the same story from everyone. Yeah. So it wasn't like, like oh, like, this never happens. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, once you piece it all together, so basically, a whole bunch of wrestlers were drunk on a plane for, like... Happened, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then you have a whole bunch of, basically, seven-year-olds from what I'm imagining, because they're drunk as hell and they're obnoxious wrestlers. And I could only imagine what normal people that have never watched wrestling would even think of these people because they're like big buff fucking little children, basically. And then to have an old ass man already, fucking this man is in his like 30s at least by this time. No, who is he? 50s. 50s, maybe. 50s, bro. Fuck yeah! But like this is 2002. For him, so he was in his late 30s, and he's he's had that type of bro, like leathery fucking like buff skin, like you know, like the type of leathery skin where it looks like beef jerky. That's what Rick Flair has. Like had a fucking turtle. I think he literal turtle skin. That's what I would say. It like he yeah. literally would look like. Uh, and yeah, for him to dis- for them to describe it as a helicopter, I'm like, yo, yo, this is the not cool. The fact that Tommy and- Dreamer knows what it looks like, and he described it the same detail, proves that Ric Flair needs help. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, just just to uh, clarify, I do not condone anything that Tommy. We Dreamer do not says. condone any of this. We're just talking about it. <laughs> Yeah, everything that Tommy Dreamer says at this point, we do not know any of that. He is not I mean, our client, I, so... Keep, keep, keep in mind that I love Tommy Dreamer, and I love all of his work, but I do not condone this. He, he's on his own on this one. He is definitely on his own. And Ric Flair now is paying the ultimate price because now he is definitely labeled a fucking sex offender at this point to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, but think about it. Rick Flair is that type of person. He's like South Park. He's uncancelable if you think about it. Because that's yeah. what, like you know how South South Park they try to get canceled every episode. Yeah, that's what, and they don't get canceled. They got just, they just got renewed for ten fucking years. So like they're at the level of uncancelable. That I feel like Ric Flair will forever be, no matter how much of a shitty person you find out he is, because there's always going to be that one person. Yeah. That, there's always going to be that one guy that's like, oh, but it's Ric Flair. It's Ric fucking Flair. I feel like that's like the ultimate thing that a lot of people are. think about how people felt in the '80s when. You know, they found out that Bill Cosby is actually a fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and fucking... Exactly. That's what I can compare this to. Like, no way. No, that's all I can say about that. After learning about what Ric Flair's done, I'm, and just to know, all those wrestlers on, those, on that plane, I've known and I've watched wrestle for a minute. So I was like, damn, Scott Hall, 
you licking a girl's face, that's not a good look. I always knew that. I always knew that Scott Hall was, uh, he was a little eccentric, to say the least. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. No doubt. Come on, it's Razor Ramon. No doubt. uh, He was was like a Shawn Michaels, except for a little bit wilder. A a little? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because think about it. Uh, from what I heard, Triple H had to get up every three hours to flip Shawn Michaels over in bed so he wouldn't choke on his own vomit and die. Because <laughs> he'd get so fucked up That's on my drugs. Ridiculous, yeah. So, the 90s. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's what ego is yeah. the booty is. For sure. No, like, I'm Ric Flair. That. That's why I said I'm, I'm, I'm the getting... fucking man. That's why I said in the beginning of all this, stay humble, kids. Stay humble. Exactly. Because egos won't get you anywhere. Never. All right. So, uh, do you think... What I think is weird is that they would just fucking... they willingly drug each other with no fucking problem. They'd be like, oh, this would be a funny joke. Poof. <laughs> and they just drug him. And they'd fucking, he'd be asleep, so they'd shave his ponytail. Like they did with Michael Hayes. He just fucking cut his fucking ponytail. <laughs> Xbox is, he just fucking ate bomb when he cut his ponytail. Like, who does it? And the fact that they were just all explaining, yeah, no, that was the thing that we all did. That That's how we went to sleep. Uh, we just but... like, oh, yeah. That was, that was, that was, you know, the boys did that back in the day. It was it was normal procedure. RVD basically said like, that all the boys back in the day were a bunch of rapists. <laughs> basically, yo. And that rape is not good <laughs> at all. Rape is not good. No, I do not condone rape of any kind. None of us do. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all that shit. So, um, so yeah, like, you know, to kind of like you know, like, have that be unraveled and to find out everything that we found out. It's a lot. And, you know, as a wrestling fan, it's a lot for me to take in. But at the same time, I I take in stride that we're in an, the next generation of wrestling. Already. And thank goodness that we're not in that era. Anymore. And that era won't yeah. ever happen again. It, it just won't. Like, that was just a product of our time. And that's that was the product of the time. Product. Yeah, a product of its time for sure. So, at this it's point, like, we're it's like PRL for the '90s. It'll never happen again. <laughs> yeah, it's, never, it's like MTV never, never, actually never. playing good music. Yeah, exactly. like dude, it's been 14 years. <laughs> it for real is dead. good music on that channel. Yeah, <laughs> now it's just fucking teenage pregnancy. <laughs> like, like dude, for reals. It's but, it's sad. The music uh, the music industry itself with MTV, it's it's sad. <laughs> but if you think about it, all right. So wrestling fans are very oh my god, it's infuriating. They are very in like oh oversensitive. Like none of them can take a joke. Or None of them can be like, yeah, oh, he sure. is an asshole. They'll be like, oh, he's a dick. Let's cancel him. Is no one allowed to have an opinion anymore? I honestly am so shocked on how toxic our wrestling community really is. It's, I, it's I mean, bad, bro. Like, it's I, almost I, as I love the wrestling community, but y'all need to chill the fuck out. It's, I, it's a love-hate relationship. It is a love-hate relationship for sure. Like I love all of the energy I get from places like that. But at the same time, if you go deep into comments, sometimes like I I seen this thing that was so ridiculous. WWE posted after Big E won the WWE Championship that Which he's the insane. sixth. Yeah, he's the sixth African American ever Champions. to win yeah. a championship. 
And I fucking read all these comments, and all these That's comments are the trying. Comment. Yeah, a lot of them, and most of them, for some weird ass reason, were was talking about how they need to take the rock off that because the rock isn't actually black. And I'm like, he, he is half black because of his dad. My brain cell just fucking, fucking one of my brain cells just died right now. And his father's he, black as hell. Yeah, his, like, his dad's I, black, and then his, well, African American, and then his mom is Samoan. So, like, he's, he's both. Yeah. So, he's still, you know. So, he's still, I, like I said, I do not get how far the stupidity can go. You know, like where where is the common sense, honestly? Like I've never met a group of more like stupider people in my life. And I've met a lot of blonde chicks. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I've met a lot of blonde chicks. So you know uh, uh, the kind of Star Wars bar. community, the Star Wars community is kind of toxic too. <laughs> I, I'm I mean I'm a fan of the movies and I have them on Blu-ray, but I don't uh, I'm not as far into the community like that. So I don't know if I like Yoda, I'm gonna get my dick chopped off by someone who likes Darth Maul. You know what I mean? It's like not that type of thing. It's it's weird. It's it's a political thing. No matter what, it's always something like that. It's it's weird. It's always rinse and repeat. It's like, always somebody just first. wanting to be yeah. right. Who gives the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like who exactly, bro? Be happy you have more Star Wars. Fuck. It's a fucking movie. Who cares? They got but your money. It's the That's same thing want. when it comes towards wrestling. Hey, but it's the same thing when it comes towards wrestling, you know, like uh rest wrestling fans are really committed to their wrestlers so like you know if you're talking shit on somebody or if you don't have like you know facts to back something up they're gonna fucking eat you alive dude that that happened to me once on instagram and i've uh i i decided to stop commenting after that because uh that was just a bad idea so i said that um (laughs) something was happening i can't remember what happened but I stated my opinion on it, and I was like, oh, this is stupid. I could write better than this. Or, like, I wrote fucking something. And then I got torn to shreds. So they're like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. You fucking, uh, you, you don't deserve to watch wrestling because you don't know what real wrestling is, kid. Oh, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh my Thank you, wrestling this. community. <laughs> I was like, all right, so cool, horrible. whatever. So fucking horrible. So, uh, yeah, the fact that the wrestling community can be that toxic is, oh, it is not, it's not, it's not a good thing. No, it's definitely not a good thing. Yeah. But, uh, people you remember be- when, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You remember when uh, AEW was a bona fide t-shirt company? Yes. <laughs> you remember back when they were a t-shirt company and they were like, oh, uh, the fucking AEW will never be anything. They're going to be WCW 2.0 or TNA 2014 or, you know, something like that. And then um, AEW turned into fucking AEW and then, you know, shit. Everybody's like, we were wrong. Because they'd have fucking press now, conferences and a t shirt release. Be like, come on, bro. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, it's like I said, the powerhouse that AEW has actually become is beyond me. I never would have, like, expected it to get that strong so fast, but it did. And I'm. <laughs> I'm content with it. <laughs> Gained a lot of traction. But yeah, you, you know what sure. I wish they, you know what I wish a wrestling company would do? You remember back in the day in like TNA in like 2007 or like 2008, the type of like camera quality and like kind of camera angles that they would do that the WWE wouldn't. So it made it feel different. Yeah. Like, I wish a wrestling company yeah, would definitely. use 
that type of camera quality and that type of like camera angles because that seemed like it could have been used a lot more, but it never was. I think, you know, honestly, I don't know what that has to do with. I think um, the closest that we ever got to even anything like that was during the pandemic when we were getting those, um, uh, what, what do you even call those matches? You know, those, yeah, yeah, like those, you know, like those are like the closest you could get to a different quality of wrestling. Because it seems like everyone's to a standard with TV, at least, to, like, how they want it to be. They want it to specifically be a certain way now. Which is dumb. You know, you got to change up the product sometime, you know? Like, bro, back in the, you, you remember back when WWE had a Skycam? Yes! Like, uh, I was watching Extreme Rules 2009. That brings me back. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> so um I was watching yeah, Extreme Rules 2009 and Jeff Hardy did something and like he jumped off the ladder and like did like a twist of fate in the air to edge or something like that. And uh you seen from the sky cam uh you seen him jump off and like because the sky cam would point directly down. And you would see the the title, and then you'd see like you know them, but it's all like small. But just seeing that they had that, they should use the, use that more because it was great for its time. It was yeah, it made wrestling so much better. Yeah. I think like t- like w- within that time, TV production just changed completely because that's remember that uh, 2009, 2008, that was like literally the end right before we went into the digital era of television. Remember, that's like when fucking they were like telling you we couldn't even use our satellite fucking cable boxes anymore. Like, yeah, that was, that that was, was before everything went. Well, everything was already HD, but. That was when the internet started getting some traction. Getting some, and yeah, like, for real. Stuff. This is when Netflix I, stopped mailing fucking DVDs to your house. Bro, I feel old because, like, I'm like, yeah, I've been here to see the internet take off, and I've been here to see Netflix take off. We're like, Netflix like, is a fucking, D- it, it was a DVD rental service company, believe it or not. Do you uh do you remember Gamefly? Bro, oh my god, dude! <laughs> I remember I would sit and watch TV for hours just waiting for the fucking uh for the sign, not the sign, the code. Like you know the, the code they have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they'd have like a oh, code. Yes, and right. they'd be like, oh, enter this code and you'll get like two months free or something, or like two weeks free or some shit like that. And Yo. I remember I used to talk, talk about it with my friends all the time. I'd be like, did you get the new GameStop code? Not GameStop code, Gamefly code. That's fucking great, yeah. See, like, that's lingo that people won't understand. You tell a kid about Gamefly, they'll be like, what the? What's Gamefly? You know Gamefly still exists? <laughs> really? No, I didn't know that it still existed. I, 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 used, I used it a couple months ago, and I played WWE 2K Battlegrounds with it. Like they sent they yep. sent the disc, uh, disc to my house and everything. I feel like that's like not as useful as it used to be because like now you can actually just order stuff off your Xbox itself or your PlayStation or whatever. Yeah, you can just digital downloads are such a huge thing that physical media is on the decline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is very disappointing because I have a big collection of uh, video games, like physical disc video games. Because think about it, once the internet goes out, you're not going to be able to play any of those games you have downloaded, you have digitally. Once the internet goes out, you're fucked. Very true. So you need um, fucking physical, physical discs 
and like those updates downloaded already because if the internet's out, you're not going to be able to download the update. That's why I got a Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh, that's why I wish it would go back to the fucking Xbox 360 days. When... Oh, man. Yes. You remember when you'd, you'd just you'd put a disc into the fucking... Uh, into the Xbox, and it would just read the shit. You wouldn't have to download an update. It would just read it and be like, okay, play. You wouldn't have to wait 20 minutes to download the newest update. Because uh, all the content was already on, on the disc. The fact that, like, nowadays, kids can't have that feeling of waiting for a game, for, like, the, the, the game to come out, waiting at game stuff for it, then getting the game, coming home, popping it in, and then just playing it. Instead, now it's like, yes, you get your free your, your game already. Now go home and download the update that's going to take you probably a day to... <laughs> and <laughs> the game's going to be broken. So we're going to have to wait to download a patch, and it's not going to even work within the next year. Yes, I'm talking about you, 2K20. <laughs> this message is brought to you by 2K22. Coming soon. This message is brought to you by WWE 2K22. It hits different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, um, did you hear about GM mode? Oh, uh, what, what was that? GM mode is supposedly coming back in 2K22. No way. Yes, I, that's from what I've heard. It hits different. It better hit different, bro, because if it doesn't hit different, they're fucked. They had a I'm year off. Be... A whole year he off, bro. A like... fucking game. That didn't turn out like shit. I still, um, to this day, I honestly think 2K19 is still a gem. I think 2K19 is one of the better ones. Out of yeah, I, I, I remember. I got that game for, I got the Deluxe Edition for Christmas. And, uh, like, I beat the game within, like, three days. Because I would play it, like, nonstop. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, bro. I repeatedly. Uh, I have you ever been the AJ Styles thing? But yeah, I, I beat that on. I I have that recorded on my YouTube channel. Nice. I beat it. Yeah, I beat it within two tries. Holy shit, that's impressive. <laughs> it, it was uh, it was very hard, and I lost all my data because um, it's in the cloud, and I don't have PlayStation Plus, so I can't download my data. So I booted up 2K19, and it said, "Do the million dollar challenge." So, fuck. No, I am not going through that again because that was a lot of stress. <laughs> that was so. What do you what do you get when you beat that? Well, you get a golden AJ Styles in game that's a hundred overall. Oh, and if you were like, if you were like in time, you if you beat the tower in time and cut a promo and sent that promo over to two K you get flown out to fucking some wrestling event that the WWE was holding. And then you'd like fight in a tournament. And then uh, the they winner would that, go right? over. They... Yeah, they went up against AJ Styles and the guy won a million dollars. Well, a million dollars. You know. Oh man, that's The shit was probably yeah, 750 k because of taxes. Probably, probably. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, there's that, and um, there, there's a lot of wrestling stuff that's that's really cool. So, um, yeah. besides that, is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, so just for a little update about the band. So, yeah, yeah, yeah do do that, do that, do that. <laughs> So we are working on our very first music video, which is going to be animated, actually. That's tight. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working hard with this artist, and we are kind of, I've kind of gotten a script together, and uh, basically, though, 
I am trying my best to make this into like an experience. I kind of like want this music video. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing is, um, you know, usually traditionally for music videos, you pick a song, you do that song, you do a music video for that song and that's it. This time around though, I am thinking about this a little bit more bigger and different. And I want to make our album into a soundtrack for this music video. So that's crazy. Yeah. And it's it's definitely a lot, honestly. I'm not gonna lie, but I have an idea of how it's going to work and taking little elements from different songs of the album and putting it into like an animation that's gonna be a trip. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, the concept is funny as hell, but it's going to be a trip. It's going to be me, Justin, and Gabriel getting sucked into a cartoon world by these little shroom heads that we call shroomalinis. That, 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 that sounds cool. Yeah, bro. So more updates on that. If you go on to our uh, Instagram and Facebook and stuff, you'll actually see uh, our first little animations. Stuff. I, I had to pull that out there. Links will be in the description. So, <laughs> but, uh, so um, there's a lot of movies coming out that are going to be really cool. Namely, yes, sir. Halloween Kills. And it's going to be on Peacock. So if you already have Peacock from wrestling, then fucking, you know, Halloween's up your alley, then go right ahead. And that's what I'm waiting for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch it in theaters first, and then I'm going to watch it on Peacock when I get home. I am so surprised right now. I did not know that. So it's going to be on Peacock the same day that it comes out on, in theaters? Yeah, it's, it's on the new and added section on Peacock right now. Honestly, bro, I do not know how to use Peacock. They took my WWE network away, and now I'm confused. It, it's actually very simple. It's just a bunch of, like, oh, TV shows, and, like, you got to look for the just added. And, like, yeah, I think, um... Let me see if I can find it. All right. And it showed the official trailer, which was really dope. See? Oh, well. Oh, that's so lit. Yeah. Hey, okay. Halloween kills. And yes, it's and, already uh, on my watch list. So. Yes, Halloween is actually one of my favorite uh, suspense movies of all time. Honestly, it's fucking, it's up there. And for uh, these next, this next one, man, it's going to be the one. I feel like this is going to be one of the or the best Halloween movie that we've ever seen. Like, it's going to be there. It, it, it looks like it is, but also, you got to remember, we have another movie coming out next year afterwards. That's so true. this movie is That's building up to, the next, to next year. Well, either way, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm really really confident that Jamie Lee Curtis is not going to survive this one. Uh, well, I would, I would say I'm in the same boat with you, but it's also, it's also Jamie Lee Curtis. So I feel like, That's you true. know, That's there's going to be some fucking hope where she's going to think she killed him and she's going to think he killed her and then they're both going to fucking survive. You know, I'm very disappointed that they did not cast. Um, did you know who uh, Paul Tommy Rudd. was? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, yes, sir. Yeah. That was his very first role ever. <laughs> and every yeah, time I talk I, about Paul Rudd, I talk about that. So. Yeah, like every single time I see Paul Rudd, I see the weird freaking face that he's making when he's stalking the fucking, that girl. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking the little tweak he does with his neck. Like, you know. And it's so weird. Now people think that's cute, but I was like, nah, that's creepers. <laughs> like, bro. And think about, you know what I don't understand? How in the hell are, uh, you know how people get face tattoos and think they look cool? Yeah. That's not cool, dude. 
it's, it's not, not <laughs> having a fucking being like oh uh having uh fucking some quote tattooed on your fucking forehead like dude face tattoos aren't yeah. cool you're just fucking yourself up i like the furthest i would go with like a neck tattoo and that's it i wouldn't like you know i wouldn't fucking get branded on the fucking you know front of my fucking you know i've um i've actually met somebody who has fuck you on their eyelids on their actual fucking eyelids that's 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 not good (laughs) that's not that's not not good at all it is what it is Just think about that. Like, dude, every time you close your eyes, just the the process of getting a like a eyeball tattoo on like your eyelid or like anywhere around the face region where it's super sensitive. I don't see how that oh dude. That can go yeah. down so many different ways. I don't yeah, know. I, it it, it scares me. Lips and goes into your eyeball. Final destination five, all over again. No, thank you. <laughs> like you remember the eye surgery scene where the bitch was? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I know. I'm, That's I'm, how, I'm, imagine that was a tattoo machine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no. And- <laughs> Oh my goodness. And another thing to add on to that, he was in prison. So that is even the safest way uh, to get a tattoo. Okay. All right. That explains a lot then. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely does. yeah. <laughs> From what I hear, there's nothing better to do in, in prison than fight over cigarettes and get tattoos. Basically. Basically. So uh, that's why I stay away from prison. But if I want to get tattoos, I'll just pay for them instead of having some some dude that looks like he's tweaked out of his mind tattoo something on my back. Yeah, <laughs> for real, like, man. You know like, I'm mean? like, bro. I definitely got to. Like, you haven't eaten in like six months. What the fuck? I am not letting you come in near me with that needle. You sure that needle's clean? Like, <laughs> I know where you make wine, motherfucker. There is no way that needle is clean. I like, yeah, that's beyond me. That when people do actually get fucking tattoos in prison, I'm like, how? <laughs> These motherfuckers make toilet wine, so you know, like, shit. Oh my goodness, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so let's stop talking about jail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what do you want to segue to? Uh, so, so going back to what I was saying, like basically like to wrap things up with the band situation. So we're on our way to making new music soon. And I'm really hoping, man, that we're getting on more festivals. And that's like the main goal for us right now is festival, 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 trying to play bigger, bigger, bigger shows. And I'm hoping that we are going to be invited this year, fingers crossed, to, to the Pomona Theater, the Fox Pomona Theater. And it's a really big venue, man. It, it looks like it can host up to like a thousand people maybe even more and like that would be definitely by far the biggest show that we've ever played so hopefully trying to make dreams come true you know in the next couple of weeks if we really work hard and put our minds to it i mean hey think about it if you're fucking sitting around doing nothing nothing's gonna ever get done you can dream about stuff all you want but if you don't do the work you're not going to be able to make it happen you know what i mean yeah yeah and same with you you know when it comes to your wrestling career man like you are putting in the work right now and all the little foundations that you need to become what you're going to become and eventually and it takes time bro it takes time patience and just blood and sweat basically and you know how you know why i'm thinking about like characters and shit now it's because i watched the chris jericho documentary 
And that's what he talked about. He talked about um, after he learned how to wrestle from the Hart family, he um, he was thinking, oh, what's my character going to be? Everybody else was not thinking about their character. They were just thinking about having a good match. He was like, good matches are cool, but I got to have a character so I can have people to go behind me. And he, he was thinking about character and attires and like what they would do and how the characters would react and like how to, you know, constant reinvention. So that's why I'm a few steps ahead than most people that are in wrestling school because they're not thinking about the character. I'm thinking about the character and like how we would fit like storyline wise and like what we could do to expand the character and stuff like that. And like a tire he can wear, you know, shit like that. That's amazing, man. And I honestly definitely wish you luck on that. And I know you're going to strive with it because I know who you are as a person. And you put your mind to it, bro. You'll do anything. Fucking, I mean, yeah, you've met Audix, so you kind of. You kind of know, and you've met me, so you kind of know that we have that type of like work ethic, work work ethic, kind of embroidered into us. So, oh yeah, for sure, uh, it's in our DNA. So you know, we we can't be sitting around fucking eating potato chips and being like, yeah, I'm gonna be the greatest wrestler who ever lived. You know? Yeah, exactly. You can't you gotta be like, do something oh. about it, man. You can't be watching wrestling and being like, oh, I could have done that better. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just sitting around with a fucking gut and you're like, oh, I could have done that better. Eh. You know, you become an armchair fucking critic. Yeah. And like at that point, like, what is the point if you're not going to try to strive to be something bigger than what you could believe that you are? You know, you and- can talk all you want. It doesn't matter unless you actually put in the work. Yep. yep. And basically, that's where I am with music right now. All these bands from Hemet, bless all of them, they're all starting to strive and play bigger and better shows. And as I'm seeing this happen, it, it discourages me because I'm like, when are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? And then I realize we're only going to get it if I get off my ass and fucking push it more and more and more. And so, Thank you, like I told you again, for giving me the opportunity to actually even talk about all this stuff on this show. Hey, think about it. I needed another guest, and it's been a while. So I thought, you know, hey, fuck it. Why not? We could just bullshit about wrestling and music and talk about life. So, you know. Yeah. It's perfect. Bro. Not and honestly, <laughs> yeah, bro. And honestly, this was the perfect platform to do it. And I, hey, whenever you need me again, just uh, shoot the shit. We could definitely do this because this is amazing, honestly, bro. I'm uh, I'm really loving the energy that you put out doing this, and you definitely need to stride more in doing this. Cause, and you can tell yeah. I, I actually enjoy it, too. Yeah. Instead of I me phoning it in and being like, oh, yeah, here's another episode. Start talking. Like, you know, <laughs> it's not like And like I told you, man, I've already done a couple of interviews, and each interview has been very awkward. It's very, like... It's hard, you know, and like I've noticed that the last couple of times I've done interviews, I'm not being myself at all. I'm just like kind of uptight, like being like, like, hi, I'm Manny. Like, you know, like you get my drift. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it means a lot that you invited me on here and I know you already. So it's way more comfortable just to talk to a friend than it is to a there's, There's a sense of comfort there. Instead of, yeah, like you never meeting me before and being like, oh, you know, let's talk about fucking whatever for 30 minutes, you know? Yeah, we actually exactly. kind of have pre existing history. Exactly. All right. So, you say this is where we wrap it up? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we got uh, just as much. Uh, plug your shit. You know how the show works. Plug your shit. <laughs> yes sir so you could find the endorphins with the z on instagram facebook youtube we have an album out right now called classics it's out everywhere literally everywhere you can even find it in your you 
You'll find even it on Tinder. Check, <laughs> check your mom's old stash of cassettes. You might even find us there too. You never know. So, hey, you never know. You never know. So it'll be on um, my two in a few minutes. Yeah. So check us out Make everywhere sure we're the endorphins with the Z. <laughs> You already know. So, yeah, check us out. We're everywhere right now. Look out for that music video. Hopefully, that's going to be coming. And, yeah, besides that, fucking uh, keep an eye out. There's going to be some new great big things coming your way. And I'm really excited to show everybody. So, segue to you now, buddy. (laughs) All right. So, that's the end of the show. I am your host that is trying to get back into the groove but he's uh very focused on other things that's why he hasn't done this in a while but nevertheless i am your shit faced um uh grubby faced host and uh see you next time in 2047 so see you later uh, see, I don't know what I'm doing because it's not done. <laughs> see, see, it's been a while. <laughs> All right, see you later. Later. <laughs> <laughs>